Our topic today, my friends, is ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy occurs when the conceptus implants either outside the uterus, fallopian tube, ovary, or abdominal cavity, or in an abnormal position within the uterus, corner, or cervix. Almost all ectopic pregnancies, about 95%, occur in the fallopian tube and are thus sometimes called tubal pregnancies. The fallopian tubes are not designed to hold a growing embryo. Thus, the fertilized egg in a tubal pregnancy cannot develop properly and must be treated. Combined tubal and uterine heterotopic pregnancies are uncommon. Locations of ectopic pregnancy, sites of implantation. I already said that fallopian tube is the most common site, especially ampulla, about 95% of patients with ectopic pregnancy. Other sites, ovary, uterine horn, cervix, broad ligament, spleen, liver, retroperitoneum, diaphragm, cesarean scar, account for about 5% of ectopic pregnancies. At this picture, you see tubal and non-tubal and heterotopic forms of ectopic pregnancy. Interstitial, isthmic, interligamentous, ampulla, most common site, a kind of ectopic pregnancies, infundibular tubal, ovarian, abdominal, intramural, cervical ectopic pregnancies. Fallopian tube. Fertilization of egg take place in the ampulla in 80-85%, there are high chances of the egg to be implanted. Isthmic part, 10 to 12%. Interstitial, 2 to 3%. Fimbrial end, 3 to 5%. What about risk factors for ectopic pregnancy? First of all, there is pelvic inflammatory disease. Six-fold increase risk. It's clear because of pelvic inflammatory diseases commonly are accompanied by the formation of adhesions, intratubal, peritubal adhesions, which can interfere the passage of sperm to the ovary or conceptus to the uterine cavity. Infertility. Of course, different for, form, forms of infertility has different risk for the formation of ectopic pregnancy. And first of all, we mean tubal form of infertility when fallopian tubes are not absolutely occluded. Use of intrauterine device. Previous exposure to diethyl steel bestrol. Tubal surgery, every tubal damage is a risk factor for ectopic pregnancy, including iatrogenic factor, including tubal surgical operations. Intrauterine surgery, for example, repetitive dilation and the curettage. Smoking, previous ectopic pregnancy, tenfold increased the risk. And the metriosis, which is also associated with formation of adhesions, 1.5 fold increase the risk. Previous tubal ligation, incomplete, of course, 5.8% increase the risk. Infertility treatment, however, in as many as one third to one half, no risk factors can be identified. Pelvic inflammatory diseases. Approximately 50% of women operated on for an ectopic pregnancy have evidence of chronic pelvic inflammatory disease. These results from the buildup of scar tissue in the fallopian tubes 
causing damage to cilia. If, however, both tubes were completely blocked so that sperm and egg were physically unable to meet, then fertilization of the egg would naturally be impossible and neither normal pregnancy nor ectopic pregnancy could occur. Tubal damage. Fallopian cilia are sometimes seen in reduced numbers subsequent to an ectopic pregnancy, leading to a hypothesis that cilia damage in the fallopian tubes is likely to lead an ectopic pregnancy. Smoking leads to risk factors of damaging and or killing cilia. As cilia degenerate, the amount of time it takes for the fertilized egg to reach the uterus will increase. The fertilized egg, if it does not reach the uterus in time, will hatch from the non-adhesive zona pellucida and implant itself inside the fallopian tube, thus causing the pregnancy. Intrauterine adhesions. Intrauterine adhesions present in Asherman syndrome, scar tissue in uterus or cervix, can cause ectopic cervical pregnancy or if adhesions partially block access to the tubes via the ostia ectopic tubal pregnancy. Asherman syndrome usually occurs from intrauterine surgery, most common after repetitive, complicated dilation and curettage. If implantation occurs into a site of the tube, that offers a sufficient area for placentation ampulla. The process is very similar to that of intrauterine pregnancy. For the conceptus, penetrates the tubal mucosa and becomes embedded in the tissue of the tubal wall. The extra velous trophoblast will penetrate the full thickness of the muscular layer of the tube to reach the serosa. Due to its limited distensibility, the tube will rupture and usually accompanied by fetal death. Occasionally, following rupture, the fetus retains sufficient attachment to its blood supply to maintain viability and secondary abdominal pregnancy can proceed to term. In an ectopic pregnancy, the uterine endometrium usually responds to the hormonal changes of pregnancy and undergoes focal decidua changes, a real reaction. If the ectopic pregnancy miscarries the uterine decidua may slough off as a cusp, but more commonly as fragments mixed with small blood clots. The uterus undergoes some of the changes associated with early normal pregnancy, including increase in size and something of the cervix and isthmus softening of the cervix and isthmus, but pay attention for discorrelation of size of uterus and the gestational age in ectopic pregnancy. It's a very important differentiation sign for the uh, ruling out of ectopic pregnancy or uterine pregnancy. Lack of uterine changes does not exclude an ectopic pregnancy, my friends. In this picture, you see laparoscopic, laparoscopic view looking down at the uterus marked blue by blue arrows. In the left fallopian tube, there is an ectopic pregnancy and the bleeding marked by red arrows. The right tube is normal. Interstitial pregnancy. 
The part of the fallopian tube that is located in the uterine wall and uh, connects with the remainder of the tube to the endometrial cavity is called its interstitial part. Hence the term interstitial pregnancy. It has a length of one to two centimeters and a width of seven millimeters. Its borders are the opening ostium of the tube to the endometrial cavity within the uterus and the laterally the visible narrow segment of the tube. The area is well supplied by the Samson artery, which is connected to both the uterine and the ovarian arteries. Surrounded by uterine muscle myometrum, it can expand significantly when it hosts a pregnancy. An interstitial pregnancy is a uterine but ectopic pregnancy. The pregnancy is located outside the uterine cavity in the part of the fallopian tube that penetrates the muscular layer of the uterus. The term corneal pregnancy is sometimes used as a synonym but remains ambiguous as it is also applied to indicate the presence of a pregnancy located within the cavity in one of the two upper horns of bicornuate uterus. Interstitial pregnancies account for 2 to 4 percent of all tubal pregnancies, or for one in 2,500 to 5,000 leap births. With the growing use of assisted reproductive technologies, the incidence of interstitial pregnancy is rising. Interstitial pregnancies can be confused with angular pregnancies. The latter, however, are located within the endometrial cavity in the corner where the tube connects. Typically, those pregnancies are viable, although a high rate of miscarriage has been reported. A pregnancy located next to the interstitial section laterally is an ethnic tubal pregnancy. Ultrasonic criteria for the diagnosis include an empty uterine cavity, a gestational sac separate from the uterine cavity, and a myometrial thinning of less than 5 millimeters around the gestational sac. Typically, the interstitial line sign an echogenic line from the endometrial cavity to the corner next to the gestational mass is seen. In contrast, the angular pregnancy has at least 5 millimeters of myometrium or on of its sides. MRI for the differential diagnosis can be used. 2% of, of ectopic pregnancies occur in the ovary, cervix, or are intra-abdominal. While a fetus of ectopic pregnancy is typically not viable, very rarely a leaf baby has been delivered from an abdominal pregnancy. In such a situation, the placenta sites of the intra-abdominal organs or the peritoneum and has found sufficient blood supply. This is generally viral or mesentery, but other sites such as the renal, kidney, hepatic, liver, artery, or even aorta have been described. The diagnosis is most commonly made at 16 to 20 weeks of gestation. 
such a fetus would have to be delivered by laparotomy, of course. Ovarian pregnancy. Ovarian pregnancy refers to an ectopic pregnancy that is loca located in the ovary. Typically, the egg cell is not released or picked up at ovulation, but fertilized within the ovary where the pregnancy implants. An untreated ovarian pregnancy causes potentially fatal intra-abdominal bleeding and thus may become a medical, medical emergency. Ovarian pregnancies rarely go longer than four weeks. Nevertheless, there is a possibility that the trophoblast finds further support outside the ovary and those may affect the tube and other organs. In very rare occasions, the pregnancy may find a sufficient foothold outside the ovary to continue as an abdominal pregnancy as an occasional delivery has been reported. At this picture, you see the scheme of formation of ovarian pregnancy when fetus is localized in the tissue of ovary. The Spiegelberg criteria are four criteria used to identify ovarian ectopic pregnancies and four differentiating ovarian from the other ectopic pregnancy. First, the gestational sac is located in the region of the ovary. Next, the ectopic pregnancy is attached to the uterus by the ovarian ligament. Ovarian tissue in the wall of the gestational sac is proved histologically. The tube on the involved side is intact. Mechanism of abdominal pregnancy. Implantation sites can be anywhere in the abdomen, but can include the peritoneum outside of the uterus, the rectal uterine pouch, cul de sac of Douglas, amentum, bowel, and its mesentery, mesosalpings, and the peritoneum of the pelvic wall and the abdominal wall. The growing placenta may be attached to several organs, including tube and the ovary. Rare other sites have been the liver and the spleen, giving rise to a hepatic pregnancy or splenic pregnancy, respectively. Even an early diaphragmatic pregnancy has been described in a patient where an embryo began growing on the underside of the diaphragm. A primary abdominal pregnancy refers to a pregnancy that first implanted directly in the peritoneum, save for the tubes and ovaries. Such pregnancies are very rare. Typically, in abdominal pregnancy is a secondary implantation, which means that it's originated from a tubal, less common an ovarian pregnancy, and re-implanted. Other mechanisms for secondary abdominal pregnancy include uterine rupture, rupture of a uterine rudimentary horn, and the fimbrial abortion. Criteria of abdominal pregnancy. To diagnose the rare primary abdominal pregnancy, Stutford's criteria need to be fulfilled. Tubes and ovaries should be normal. There is no abnormal connection fistula between the uterus and the abdominal cavity. And the pregnancy is related exclusively to the peritoneal surface without signs that there was a tubal pregnancy first. Heterotopic pregnancy. A heterotopic pregnancy is a rare complication of pregnancy 
in which both extrauterine ectopic pregnancy and intrauterine pregnancy occur simultaneously. In a heterotopic pregnancy, there is one fertilized ovum which implants normally in the uterus and one fertilized ovum which implants abnormally outside of the uterus. A cervical pregnancy is an ectopic pregnancy that has implanted in the uterine and the cervix. Such a pregnancy typically aborts within the first trimester. However, if it is implanted closely to the uterine cavity, a so-called cervicoisthmic pregnancy, it may continue longer. Placental removal in a cervical pregnancy may result in major hemorrhage. Pregnancies involving the isthmus, the segment of the uterus between the cervix and the fundus, are more common than true cervical pregnancies. While in many situations the cause of the abnormal implantation remains unclear, there is evidence to link the development of cervical pregnancy to uterine instrumentation, specifically repeated dilation and the curettage. On a very rare occasion, a cervical pregnancy results in the birth of a leaf baby. Typically, the pregnancy is in the upper part of the cervical canal and then manages to extend into the lower part of the uterine cavity. Vaginal ultrasonography of a cervical pregnancy at a gestational age of five weeks is presented at the picture. Image below for details of the visible structures. You see uterine cavity, uterine wall, yolk sac, fetus, gestational sac. Persistent ectopic pregnancy. A persistent ectopic pregnancy refers to the continuation of trophoblastic growth after a surgical intervention to remove an ectopic pregnancy. After a conservative procedure that attempts to preserve the affected fallopian tube, such as a salpingotomy, in about 15 to 20 percent, the major portion of the ectopic growth may have been removed, but some trophoblastic tissue, perhaps deeply embedded, has escaped removal and continues to grow, generating a new rise in HCG levels. Pregnancy of unknown location is the term used for a pregnancy where there is a positive pregnancy test, but no pregnancy has been visualized using transvaginal ultrasonography. The true nature of the pregnancy can be an ongoing viable intrauterine pregnancy, a failed pregnancy, an ectopic pregnancy, or really a persisting pregnancy of unknown location. Mortality. Mortality from ectopic pregnancy remains high, unfortunately, representing 13% of all maternal deaths. The fatality rate of ectopic pregnancy is about four times that of childbirth. Patients with an interstitial pregnancy have a seven times higher mortality than those with ectopic in general. Due to increased vascularity, that may result more likely in sudden major internal bleeding. About one in 50 women with interstitial pregnancy dies. Maternal mobility, mobility and the mortality from abdominal pregnancy are high as attempts to remove the placenta from the organs to which is attached usually lead to uncontrollable bleeding 
from the attachment site. If the organ to which the placenta is attached is removable, such as section of bowel, then the placenta should be removed together with that organ. However, the vast majority of abdominal pregnancies require intervention well before fetal viability because of the risk of profuse bleeding. Diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy based on history and physical examination, gynecological examination, test on pregnancy, ultrasonography, synthesis, laparoscopy. Signs and symptoms. According to clinical duration, we differentiate unruptured ectopic pregnancy, interrupted ectopic pregnancy in two subtypes, tubal abortion or tubal rupture. Unruptured ectopic pregnancy. Up to 10% of women with ectopic pregnancy initially have no symptoms and one third have no medical signs. Compared to the other forms of early pregnancy disorders, there is no pathognomonic pain or findings on clinical examination that are diagnostic of a developing extra uterine pregnancy. In many cases, the symptoms have low specificity and can be similar to those of other genital urinary and gastrointestinal disorders, such as appendicitis, salpingitis, rupture of a corpus luteum cyst, miscarriage, ovarian torsion or urinary tract infection. Clinical presentation of ectopic pregnancy occurs at mean of 7.2 weeks after the last normal menstrual period, with a range of 4 to 8 weeks. Signs and symptoms of unruptured ectopic pregnancy include non-specific pregnancy signs, period of amenorrhea, nausea, vomiting, change of appetite, pain and tenderness of breast, dull, no constant abdominal pain with spotting, usually occurring six to eight weeks after the last normal menstrual period in symptomatic patients. Other presentations depend on the location of the ectopic pregnancy. Before rupture, vital signs are generally normal. There is no absolute values for the level of beta HCG for ectopic pregnancy. In ectopic pregnancy after three weeks of gestation, the content of beta HCG is lower compared to uterine pregnancy of the same period in 94% of cases. In ectopic pregnancy, the concentration of the hormone in most cases does not exceed 1000 milli international unit per milliliter. Findings include cyanosis of vaginal wall and cervix, which is not specific for the ectopic or aortopic intrauterine pregnancy. Bloody discharge, slightly enlarged and soft uterus. I am repeating, enlargement of the uterus is less than expected for a pregnancy duration. Presence of uterine or cervical motion tenderness. An adnexal mass may be palpated on one side. Uterine contents may be present in the vagina due to shedding of decidual endometrial lining as a cast stimulated by an ectopic pregnancy. Transvaginal ultrasound shows. Empty uterus, 
gestational sac in the tube, adnexal mass that moves separately from the ovary. In around 60% of cases, it is an inhomogeneous or non cystic adnexal mass, sometimes known as the blob sign. A blob sign which consists of the ectopic pregnancy. The ovary is distinguished from its by having follicles, where of one is visible in the field. This patient had an intrauterine device, you see it, with progestogen whose cross section is visible in the field, leaving an ultrasound shadow distally to it. You see it, this shadow. Because of frequent ambiguity on ultrasonography examination, the following classification is proposed. Definitive ectopic pregnancy. X criteria, extra uterine gestational sac with yolk sac and or embryo with or without cardiac activity. Pregnancy of unknown location, probable ectopic pregnancy. Inhomogeneous adnexal mass or extra uterine sac like structure. True pregnancy of unknown location. No signs of intrauterine, no extra uterine pregnancy on transvaginal ultrasonography. Pregnancy of unknown location, probable intrauterine pregnancy. Intrauterine gestational sac like structures. Definite intrauterine pregnancy. Intrauterine gestational sac with yolk sac and or embryo with or without cardiac activity. Doppler ultrasonography. Ring of fire appearance. Increase in vascularization around the gestational sac is pathognomonic sign of ectopic pregnancy in Doppler investigation. The beta HCG levels and ultrasound finding must be interpreted together. On one of the most important parameters is the discriminatory beta HCG level above which the gestational sac of an intrauterine pregnancy should be detectable by ultrasonography. Usually, 1,000. 1,500 international unit per milli per liter. Perform the 48-hour serial beta HCG monitoring. A value exceeding 25 nanograms per milliliter excludes ectopic pregnancy. Serum progesterone levels. Values below 5 nanograms per milliliter suggest either an intrauterine pregnancy with a dead fetus or an ectopic pregnancy. Mostly in our practice, we don't use serum progesterone levels because their levels are variable. Gold standard of diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy is laparoscopy. You see the affection of fallopian tube by ectopic pregnancy, blue discoloration, distension of fallopian tube, and high vascularization of it. Tubal abortion. Embryo detaches from the tubal wall and passes into the abdominal cavity via the ampulla end of the fallopian tube. Clinical picture, colicky iliac pain, one-sided, irradiation, tie, rectum, sacrum. Rarely, pain in supraclavicular part, phrenicus sign, 
it's more typical for the patients with the ruptured fallopian tubes due to highest volume of blood loss into the abdominal cavity. When the entire embryo comes out of the tube at once, it can lead to internal bleeding rarely, symptoms of shock, giddiness, loss of consciousness. Sometimes the embryo stops to come out of the tube for a while. At this time, pain stops disturbing. However, pain returns again. This can repeat once or twice. Blood that outflows from the tube is accumulated in the cul-de-sac and causes the feeling of pressure on a rectum. Brown in color discharge from external genitalia have sporting character. Sometimes scraps of decidual membrane can go out. Speculum and biomanual examination. Findings include cyanosis of vaginal wall and cervix, bloody or brown discharge, slightly enlarged of the soft uterus, presence of uterine or cervical motion tenderness, and adnexal mass may be palpated on one side. Uterine contains may be present in the vagina due to the shedding of the sedual endometrial lining as a cast. Investigations. Transvaginal ultrasound. Possible features are no embryo in the uterus or the fallopian tube. The embryo may be found in the abdominal cavity very rarely because of the object is small. Presence of fluid in the abdominal cavity, which is also non-specific. Beta HCG variable but mostly low cool the synthesis very informative diagnostic procedure in patients with excessive intra-abdominal bleeding only in high amounts of blood in the pelvis you can use this procedure successfully how do we do it the cervix is pulled toward the synthesis with the tenaculum and the long 6 or 18 gauge needle is inserted through the posterior phonics into the cool the sac. Fluid containing fragments of old clots or bloody fluid that does not clot is compatible with the diagnosis of hemapiritoneum resulting from an ectopic pregnancy. At this picture, you see laparoscopical presentation of pelvic bleeding in patients with tubal abortion. At this scheme, you see the management, diagnostical management for the patients with pregnancy of unknown location, depending on the hemodynamical state, presence of pain, and other aspects. Dilation and the curatorship. It is sometimes used to diagnose pregnancy location with the aim of differentiating between an ectopic pregnancy and non-viable intrauterine pregnancy in situation where a viable IUP can be ruled out. Specific indications for this procedure include either of following. No visible intrauterine pregnancy on transvaginal ultrasonography with a serum beta-HCG of more than 2,000 international unit per milliliter. In abnormal rise in beta HCG level, a rise of 35% over 48 hours is proposed as the minimal rise consistent with a viable intrauterine pregnancy. 
an abnormal fall of beta HCG level, such as defined as one of less than 20% in two days. Tubal rupture. Is the rupture of the fallopian tube with the embryo, not only because of the mechanical tension, but due to corrosion of the tube by the growing chorionic villi. At this picture, you see ruptured fallopian tubes caused by ectopic pregnancy and the developing fetus. Site earliest to rupture. Isthmus is the earliest to rupture. Isthmus is the second narrowest part. Diameter of isthmus 2.55 millimeters. Ampular diameter is 6 millimeters. Earliest to rupture by 6 weeks. Last site to rupture. Implantation in the intramural part of the fallopian tube. Uterine musculature is present in the interstitial part of fallopian tube. Because of the musculature, pregnancy can prolong up to 12 weeks sometimes. The musculature supports the implant for a longer time. Clinical picture. Most patients will come in with emergency situation with severe internal bleeding, shock symptoms, acute anemia, and pain. Signs and symptoms. Signs of pregnancy. Disease begins after menses delay with acute pain in lower abdomen, pain sudden, sometimes knife-like localized in iliac region. It radiates to rectum and sacrum. Pain followed by momentary loss of consciousness. After this patient remains adynamic. During an attempt to get up, she can lose her consciousness again. Internal bleeding signs. Acute paler, cold sweat, cold lower limbs, feeling of weakness faint, three thread like pulse, breathing difficult, dull percussion in lateral abdominal region, palpation abdomen is painful, plus signs of peritoneal irritation. Diagnosis of tubal rupture. Cyanosis of mucous membrane of vagina, bloody excretion, dark colored coffee ground. Bimanual examination shows cervical motion tenderness, bulging and acute pain in posterior pouch, uterus body enlargement insignificantly. Alongside of uterus, painful organ with unclear contours can be palpated. Sometimes organ is pulsatory. Specific vaginal examination signs. First, Landau sign. Intensive pain during speculum or finger inserting into vagina. Next sign. Uterine cervix paler. Next, acute pain during an attempt to displace uterine cervix. Next, soft consistency of cervix, which is non-specific for different sites of pregnancy. Prompt of science. Women feel acute pain during an attempt to displace uterus up, be inserted into vagina and the rectum fingers. At appendicitis examination, rectum causes pain in the recta uterine pouch. Next sign. Uterus displacement into contrary from the outer tubal site. During examination, uterus easily comes into the normal position and when examination is over, 
it returns into its previous position. Diagnosis of tubal rupture. A classical triad of symptoms can help in making diagnosis. Amenorrhea, vaginal bleeding, acute pain plus positive urinary pregnancy test. Very often in combination with symptoms of hemorrhagic shock. Internal bleeding due to tubal rupture. Transvaginal ultrasound shows, as a rule, the finding of free fluid is significant if it reaches the fundus or is present in vesica uterine pouch. A further marker of serious intra-abdominal bleeding is the presence of fluid in the hepatorenal recess of the subhepatic space. Cool the synthesis. Fluid containing fragments of old clots or bloody fluid that does not clot is compatible with the diagnosis of hemophiritoneum, resulting from an ectopic pregnancy, for example, tubal rupture. Management. Ectopic pregnancy can be treated conservative, expectant, surgical, or medical. According to clinical presentation, ultrasound findings, beta HCG titer. The term expectant management is usually defined as watchful waiting or close monitoring by a physician instead of immediate treatment. Criteria. Decreasing serial beta HCG levels. Tubal pregnancy only. No evidence of intraabdominal bleeding or rupture as assessed by vaginal sonography. Diameter of the ectopic mass not greater than 3.5 centimeters. Surgical management. The classical approach to the treatment of ectopic pregnancy has always been surgical, selfingectomy or selfingostomy or selfingectomy, either by laparotomy or laparoscopy. The wider use of ultrasound and early diagnosis is now possible in many cases before the onset of symptoms. Selfingostomy. Used to remove a small pregnancy, usually less than 2 cm in length. A 10 to 15 mm linear incision is made on the antimesenteric body immediately over the ectopic pregnancy and its left unsuited to heal by secondary intention. Easily performed through a laparoscope. Gold standard surgical method used for unruptured ectopic pregnancy and necessity to preserve fallopian tube. Selfingostomy. There is a very small risk that some of the products of pregnancy may remain in the tube after selfingostomy. Therefore, patient is advised to have a weekly blood test for monitor beta HCG levels and the decreased levels of beta HCG shows that the pregnancy is fully resolved. You see linear incision, removal of product of conception by forceps, and the incision is left to heal without being sutured. Selpingotomy procedure is the same as selpingostomy, except that the incision is closed with suture. At the left side of picture, you see laparoscopic selpingectomy, selpingostomy at the right side of picture. Radical treatment, selpingectomy. If the tube has already ruptured or damaged as a result of an ectopic pregnancy, selfingectomy is performed to remove the damaged 
follow up and tumor. Selpingectomy is appropriate for women who have a healthy contralateral tumor. Coronal resection. Coronal resection may be performed when an interstitial pregnancy occurs. The interstitial portion of the tube is removed via wedge resection into the uterine coronal ovarian pregnancy. In ovarian pregnancy, which are dangerous and prone to internal bleeding in attempts to preserve ovarian tissue, surgery may involve just the removal of the pregnancy with only a part of ovary. This can be accomplished by an ovarian wedge resection. But typical operation is unilateral selpinger ophorectomy. You see the ovary resected and the conceptus fetus inside. Cervical pregnancies management. True cervical pregnancies tend to abort. If, however, the pregnancy is located higher in the canal and the placenta finds supports in the uterine cavity, it can go past the first trimester. While early cervical pregnancy may abort spontaneously or can be managed with excision, DIC, suturing, electric cautery, and the tamponading by medications such as methotrexate and or by uterine artery embolization, a more advanced pregnancies may require a hysterectomy to control bleeding. The more advanced the pregnancy, the higher the risk for a major bleeding necessitating a hysterectomy. Abdominal pregnancy. In abdominal pregnancy, surgery with termination of the pregnancy, removal of the fetus via laparoscopy or laparotomy, use of methotrexate, embolization, and the combination of these. Conservative treatment is also possible if the following criteria are met. There are no major congenital malformation. The uterus, the fetus is a leap. There is a continuous hospitalization in a well equipped and well staffed maternity unit which has immediate blood transfusion facilities. There is a careful monitoring of maternal and fetal well being. And Placental implantation is in the lower abdomen, away from the liver and the spleen. The choice is largely dictated by the clinical situation. Generally, treatment is indicated when the diagnosis is made. However, the situation of the advanced abdominal pregnancy is more complicated. Delivery in case of advanced abdominal pregnancy will have be via laparotomy. The survival of the baby is reduced and high perinatal mortality rates between 40 to 95% have been reported. Babies of abdominal pregnancy are prone to birth defects due to compression in the absence of the uterine wall and the often reduced amount of amniotic fluid surrounding the unborn baby. Abdominal pregnancy being removed at this picture. Once the baby has been delivered, placental management becomes an issue. In normal deliveries, the contraction of uterus provides a powerful mechanism to control blood loss. However, in an abdominal pregnancy, 
The placenta is located over tissues that cannot contract and attempts of its removal may lead to life-threatening blood loss. Thus, blood transfusion is frequent in the management of patients with this kind of pregnancy, with other even using tranexamic acid and the recombinant factor 8A, which both minimize blood loss. Generally, unless the placenta can be easily tied off or removed, it may be preferable to leave it in place and allow for a natural regression. This process may take several months and can be monitored by clinical examination, checking human chorionic gonadotropin levels and by ultrasound scanning, in particular using Doppler ultrasonography. Use of metatrixate to accelerate placental regression is controversial, as the large amount of necrotic tissue is a potential site for infection. Mifepristone has also been used to promote placental regression. Placental vessels have also been blocked by angiographic embolization. Complications of leaving the placenta can include residual bleeding, infection, bowel obstruction, preeclampsia, which may all necessitate further surgery, and failure to breastfeed due to placental hormones. Advanced abdominal pregnancy refers to a situation where the pregnancy continues past 20 weeks of gestation versus early abdominal pregnancy less than 30 weeks. A patient may carry a dead fetus but will not go into labor. Over time, the fetus calcifies and becomes a lithopedion. A lithopedion you see at the picture. This highly unusual specimen remained in the abdomen of a woman for 55 years. During this time, the mother had five, my friends, additional uncomplicated pregnancies. It's a miracle, really. At the right side of picture, you see CT scan showing an extra uterine calcified fetal skeleton, a lithopedion. Management of hemorrhagic shock, my friends. It's a very important item. Three goals. Maximize oxygen delivery. Arrest blood loss. Normalize blood volume and correct metabolic acidosis. Hemorrhagic control depends on source of bleeding, mainly by emergent surgical intervention. If the ectopic pregnancy is causing heavy bleeding, hemodynamically unstable patients, you might need emergent surgery through an abdominal incision, laparotomy. This method may, be also, may also be appropriate when laparoscopy is contraindicated or technically challenging because of extensive adhesive disease from the prior surgery or no experience of laparoscopic operations in surgeon in these emergent situations. Medical treatment, medical management. Non-surgical medical therapeutic approaches have been introduced such as puncture and aspiration of the ectopic sac, local injections of prostaglandins, potassium chloride, Hyperosmolar glucose, metatrixate. The advantages of treatment that does not involve surgery or the use of potentially toxic drugs are obvious. Metatrixate. It's an antineoplastic drug 
that acts as a folic acid antagonist and it's highly effective against rapidly proliferating trophoblasts. It stops cell growth and dissolves existing cells. Success rates of medical treatment vary from 65 to 95%, depending on the circumstances in which methotrexate is given. Doses of methotrexate, 50 milligrams per square meter intermuscularly. On day four and day seven measure beta HCG levels. The levels should fall more than 15% within this time. If fall is less than 10%, then give one more dose. Maximum dose is three doses. Keep measured beta HCG till it becomes zero. Success of employment of methotrexates uh, is greatest if the gestation is less than six weeks. The tubal mass should be less than 3.5 centimeters in diameter. The fetus is dead. Beta HCG is less than 15,000 milli international unit per milliliter. Follow up visits for a few weeks are required to ensure the pregnancy has completely ended. A reliable contraception should be used for at least three months. Contraindication for methotrexate. Absolute. Active pulmonary diseases, alcoholism, breastfeeding, hematologic dysfunction, Known sensitivity to methotrexate, laboratory evidence of immunodeficiency syndromes, peptic ulcer disease, renal disease with abnormal creatinine clearance. Relative, but beta HCG level more than 2000 milli international unit per milliliter, embryonic cardiac activity, gestational sac more than 3.5 centimeters. I want to say that employment of uh, in our uh, of uh, methotrexate is our, our country is in our country is not uh, common. The employment of methotrexate is a responsibility of oncologists. Now anti-RD immunoglobulin. Rhesus D negative women with an ectopic pregnancy who are not sensitized to D antigen should be given anti-D immunoglobulin. Prognosis. The chances of having of a successful pregnancy in the future are good. If only one follow-up tube is present, chances of conceiving are only slightly reduced. Women who have had a previous ectopic pregnancy are at higher risk of recurrence. Prevention. Prophylaxis of sexually transmitted diseases, education of patients and children. Occurrence of ectopic pregnancy cannot be prevented, by complications can be reduced, prevented with early diagnosis and the treatment. What can we do for this aim? to investigate ultrasonographically every patient before eight weeks of gestational age for the ruling out of ectopic pregnancy. Because of the symptoms of early intrauterine pregnancy and extrauterine pregnancy are nonspecific and similar. Women should seek early advice from a healthcare professional week. She is when she is pregnant. I am repeating, she should be advised an ultrasound scan between six and eight weeks of pregnancy to confirm that the pregnancy is developing in the uterus. Remember it, my friends, and investigate all your pregnant patients. 
Thank you for your attention, my friends. If you have any questions, with questions we can discuss them at class. Now please write everybody your names. IVF in future with method of surgery recommended or maybe combination some methods. Wish to require IVF in future, in future, my friends. It's a discussionable question. The, situ the more important uh, condition for the choice of treatment is a concrete clinical situation, my friends. Really, uh, in modern conditions, we uh, prefer to remove affected fallopian tubes because of uh, you already know that the risk of recurrence of uh, extrauterine pregnancy in case of preserved initially damaged fallopian tubes is very high really and in the past i in the past i remember this time when we tried to preserve every fallopian tubes if it's not it, if it wasn't that damaged absolutely and in modern conditions in time of uh, high spread of ivf uh, in vitro fertilization and other assisted reproductive technologies we may uh, be more active uh, for the patients with the um, ectopic pregnancy and uh, remove uh, affected fallopian tubes because of you know that in some countries in many countries the patients have um, a government support financial support of one attempt or more sometimes attempts of uh, ivf and in this case it's better to uh, remove fallopian tube because of nobody knows when this patient, when the recidive of uh, ectopic pregnancy will happen uh, in future, it's good if it's if it will be in uh, in a big city near the hospital, near the emergency hospital. Imagine the situation where the patient will be, I don't know, in mountains, in jungles, in seaside, and in I don't know where, without uh, adequate medical helpness. Corpus luteum cyst and ectopic pregnancy. My friends, first of all, my friends, uh, Merle, uh, you can answer this question, I believe. First of all, what will be your first diagnostical measure for the differentiation of corpus luteum? Simple question. For the differential of corpus luteum says cyst and ectopic pregnancy. First test is. No, ultrasound could not be. Yes, HCG, of course, HCG. HCG, Sarank, excellent for you again. Very good student. Uh, of course, HCG. Next question. Stop, please. Stop, please. You are writing in chat. I just know about metatrix seed proof seed is apply, but for cancer patient. How about the pregnant women with cancer? Can we give because of mechanism of disturbing dividing cells? Thank you. Uh, my friends, you mean the combination of uh, the pregnant women with cancer, the combination of pregnant, Mohammed, you are asking about the combination and uh, pregnancy and cancer. Oh, it's very responsible situation. It's necessary to discuss what kind of cancer first. Because of, uh, in this case, we must understand, mostly my friends, in combination, mostly my friends, yesterday you asked me about, I don't remember who asked me in my group, what about what to do with the pregnancy and uh, cervical cancer stage uh, two. I answered that it's possible to wait the time of uh, delivery. Uh, yes, it's possible. You know, it's, uh, it's necessary to discuss concrete situation. Uh, not all patients with to stage two with stage 2a yes it's possible what about are you asking Mohammed? what kind of cancer cancer patient cancer endometrial cancer cervical cancer breast cancer uh, my friends mostly in situation of combination of pregnancy and cancer our first task is to preserve the patient's life you agree or not delivery baby fetus are very important but but if you compare the uh, price the price of uh, uh, life of mother and the fetus everything is clear for you only is if the patient uh, desires pregnancy actively asks uh, you about possibility of preservation of pregnancy you will think about mostly uh, 
uh, we decided to uh, uh, terminate the pregnancy and uh, start to continue the um, cancer because of mostly, mostly my friends, pregnancy induces the vascularization, uh, blood supply, and uh, induce the um, active spread and the growth of all types of uh, cancers. Very responsible situation. It's necessary to <clears throat> to discuss it individually. Individually, the main task is, is to preserve the patient's life. Did I answer your question, Mohammed? Okay. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for your attention and thank you for your activity. It's very good that you don't sleep. You uh, uh, listen to me and uh, ask your questions. Continue it. Continue it, my friends. Uh, see you at uh, Discord platform, my group, I mean, and uh, contact with your teacher by Discord platform to uh, I mean group A. Goodbye, my friends. See you later. Write your names now. You're welcome.